A while ago, we did a video on whether smartphones could actually cause cancer from the radiation that they give off in the form of cellular and Wi-Fi signals. You can check it out up here, but the main takeaway is no, you don't have anything to worry about. But here we are in 2019, and some of the same concerns are getting raised yet again, this time about 5G. Although 5G promises to deliver faster speeds to our phones, and there are even home-based internet solutions that use 5G, the fact that 5G travels over higher frequency radio waves has led to speculation that it might be riskier to use than older generation wireless standards. So how much truth is there to this, and why are people concerned in the first place? Well, to start with, 5G uses what's often called millimeter wave frequencies, which are shorter than the typical frequencies used by 4G and Wi-Fi signals, and therefore higher in energy. In fact, while LTE can use frequencies of around 2.5 gigahertz, and Wi-Fi often works on the 5 gigahertz band, millimeter wave frequencies used by 5G can be up to 300 gigahertz, so we're not talking about like a small incremental leap here. So then could all this extra energy end up being harmful in ways we haven't seen before? Well, some of the folks and advocacy groups that believe it is point to actions taken by the International Agency for Research on Cancer, or IARC, specifically the fact that they've classified RF electromagnetic fields, in short, radio waves, as possibly carcinogenic to humans as evidence that it is. Well, that sounds pretty alarming, doesn't it? Well, it might, until you consider that many things that most of us find innocuous, like a cup of coffee, actually fall under exactly the same category. You see, if you dig into what the IARC's definition of possibly carcinogenic is, they mean that there's only a limited amount of evidence that an agent might cause cancer. So there might be some kind of weak correlation that's been observed in studies, but that is a very far cry from there being any kind of real causal link that's been found. So IARC's approach is to err on the safe side with anything that it classifies, a bit like how everything that you buy has a label on it saying, the state of California thinks this thing might cause cancer. But this hasn't stopped people from hearing the words possibly carcinogenic and running with it. In fact, a couple places in Europe were hesitant to test new 5G infrastructure, citing health concerns, and there were even rumors that there were widespread bird deaths in the Netherlands due to 5G trials. Well, it turned out those birds were just eating poisonous plants. I guess there's a reason that bird brain is an expression. Anyway, the reason that we have nothing to fear from 5G is that radiation has to be much higher frequency to be what's called ionizing. Ionizing radiation can mess with the molecular structure of your DNA and cause cancer. The thing is, the threshold for this is around a million gigahertz, much higher than the 300 or so that can be used by 5G. And at that point, you're not even dealing with radio waves anymore. You're dealing with ultraviolet light, which is why sunscreen bottles talk about UV protection on the label. Now, with all of that said, we're not claiming that 5G or any other piece of technology that we use can't cause cancer or other health problems by some mechanism that we haven't yet discovered or don't fully understand yet. The thing is though, my advice would be to go forward, live your life without too much fear, and pick up that hot new 5G phone if you're into it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go pick up a large sack of cash that the mobile phone industry left for me out back. Bye. Oh wait, no, actually the cash comes from Squarespace. Uh, create a beautiful website with Squarespace's all-in-one platform. Their award-winning templates make creating a powerful online identity even easier than ever before, and every template is a starting point for a wide range of projects. Squarespace provides award-winning 24-7 customer support via live chat and email, and you can also attend a live webinar or check out their help guides if you're having trouble. You can also transfer your third-party domains to Squarespace, so instead of working with multiple vendors to maintain your online presence, you can manage all your domain and billing settings with Squarespace. 
Furthermore, it's never been easier to sell products or services online. Squarespace allows you to easily manage your products, orders, and inventory. So head to squarespace.com forward slash techquickie, we're gonna have that linked below, and use code techquickie to get 10% off your first purchase. So thanks for watching, like, dislike, check out our other videos, leave a comment if you have a video suggestion, and don't forget to subscribe and follow so you don't miss any future fast as possible videos. That is, unless your 5G phone killed you, in which case YouTube is probably going to cull your account at some point.